So, in America, 1% of men control 90% of wealth, which means that only 10% of wealth is only available for 99, excuse me, 90% of men left over and 99% of women who were left over. Why is that? Because typically men in the 1% marry are all married, which means that they only can marry one per one woman. That means that as far as, you know, wealth or, um, that leaves 90% of men competing with 99% of women. Imagine if there's 10% of wealth available in all of the United States, but imagine that's, let's say that's only 20 million jobs, 20 million jobs with an available 10% of wealth equals the wages that are available. Now, this is a hypothetical number. Let's assume that this is 1950 and that every woman wants to be a housewife, meaning that every man is, is going to work and support a woman, which would mean that 90% of men have access to 10% of wealth. And if, let's say if that 90% of men equals 20 million jobs, then, you know, then that, that's how wages are determined. There's actually less wealth available now compared to before, meaning that there's actually only about 8% of wealth that's available, meaning that 92% of wealth is controlled still by 1% of men. But that's a problem because it's not 1950, which means that women entered the workforce. Okay. If women no longer want to be supported by a man, when men were head of households, there were only a certain amount of jobs that were available, which made wages higher. Now there's less wealth available. There's 2% less wealth now available to all Americans compared to 10% 50 years ago. But now there are 40, there are twice as many people competing for a lower amount of wealth, which means that wages have to go lower because if, as there are more people that enter the labor market, that doesn't change the available amount of wealth. That means that more people have to share the pot of wealth.